applications and services cloud service companies often offering us uh, to, to, to help us with our daily tasks and so on. And everything is working in the cloud and centralized and we're so cool uh, running on huge data centers. And, um, but who controls those data centers and uh, where are they located? Um, are, they, are they controlled by the companies or is it the government? And um, what's behind these data centers? What will, be, what will bring the future? We are always online, we are always connected to the internet. So is it the future? Will all of this help us in that situation? So, yeah, well, I'll start with this one. Um, you already know. I don't have to talk about it anymore. So, um, NSA, um, spies everywhere. And but there's another way, or another situation where you don't have internet. So let's remember this one. This is a good edit in the revolution and the demonstrations where they shut down the internet by the government, where the people don't have any possibility to communicate over the internet or uh, just exchange files, get news, or inform themselves. Um, they plug, the, they unplug the plug, and yeah, everybody was disconnected and has no possibility to get any information anymore. Or, or, doesn't even get the uh, data he stored on the on the big data cloud. So and the even worse situation you can have is um, yeah censorship. Sense. Or censorship it's getting even more worse if bloggers got pursued in China for blocking for blocking critic posts. So well I have a small and simple solution to get your control back to your data, to your data locally and it's flying under over there attitude of the federal services, it's called Firefox. In the next couple of 30 minutes I'm going to talk about um, the history of the project, forks and use cases, especially the use cases are the most interesting part of Firefox because it's not always about file sharing. Um, I'm talking a bit about the current system and how the current development works and how, what the future will bring. And yeah, at the end I'm, I'm talking to, I'm, I'm telling, telling you how you get a pirate box for yourself. Yeah, as you introduced me, I'm Matthias Strubel, I'm the lead developer of the project. Um, I'm nearly since the beginning at the project, uh, giving support, and on my daytime job I'm a freelancer on the topics Linux and mainframe integration. Um, this is David Darts. David Darts is the, the author or founder of the pirate box project. As it, uh, he's a teacher. He teaches um, media art classes in the University of New York. And he's a maker. And he had a problem. Because he's teaching media art classes, he wasn't allowed to... He has to use copyright protected materials for the students. And he wasn't allowed to put all these copyright protected materials on the data centers of the university. The data centers uh, are, have this restricted access for copyright protected materials. And so he has to... But he has to exchange. He has, he has the need to exchange those materials with the students. So, um, well, he, he had to find a solution, and USB sticks is obviously not the correct solution for exchanging data with your students and collecting homework or something like that. So, um, yeah, David is a maker, and as a maker, he tries to find, help, to find solutions and finds to, tries to, tries to find um, people who help him to find solutions, and shortly, after a couple of months of testing and playing around, he came up with the first setup of Pirate Box. This is the first setup, which was released in January 2011. Um, it's a Seagate Dockstar running Debian. That's the small white one in the middle. Uh, it runs with an additional with an small ASUS Wi Fi router, which only does the Wi Fi handling and so on. And the black one is, is a battery pack. So um, this, this first setup opens up. An open Wi-Fi, an unencrypted Wi-Fi, which everyone can join, and everyone gets redirected directly to the main page. And um, this simple page offers you upload possibilities and download possibilities, just to collect stuff. And it was a bunch of Python script, fairly unsorted and uncomfortable to use. And at this point, he wasn't very really sure really sure how to, to name this project, so ideas like no sharebox and yeah, what, where does the name Pirate Box come from? Does the name Pirate Box come from? The Pirate Bay, of course, yeah. 
and inspired by the pyrophe and the pirate radio movement. You know pirate radio movement. It's, a, it's doing um, all radio UKV stuff uh, across the ear sending music. And um, inspired by those two topics, he found uh, this, oops, this tiny lunchbox in the uh, room of his daughter. And so the name come up, Pirate Box. It's a mixture of everything. And it's artistic provocation about file sharing, about censorship stuff, and yeah. So, Pirate Box. Let's call it the plural Pirate Boxen, referring to Jason Griffin. We're using this um, plural form for, for his talk. And um, so that's the logo. Maybe it will turn to something else in the next couple of years, but it's quite widely spread across the internet. And so, if a pirate box comes online, it offers the open Wi-Fi spot called Pirate Box Share Freely. And um, yeah, it uses some kind of captive portal technique to redirect everything. And per design, you have no internet access, you have no user tracking in any case, and you have no log files. So if you drop by, download something, even if it's copyright protected or not, even the owner won't even recognize it. <laughs> and um, but the only thing you can't overcome is, uh, yeah, of course, if if somebody listens to the network, um, your client's still sending its MAC address. And um, the other issue, issue is the data has been encrypted on the, on the USB stick. But well, for a first setup, it's um, enough. Um, yeah, so, but David, David um, won't, won't hold this, this kind of system for himself. So, because it's easier to, to ship receipts than, than cakes or biscuits, uh, and, and of the origin of being a maker, he started to write down on how to and uh, started to publish it in his local area. And short time after, yeah, we had to hack a day entry and Quite well, after January 2011, it was over 175 articles across the internet about the uh, Pirate Box and about the Create Media Echo. And because of the Create Media, Media Echo, I came to this project too, because at this time I uh, was uh, switching from doing gaming all day long and uh, I want to contribute to the open source community at a specific point back. So, yeah, I found it and I stepped into the project in the end of January 2011. I found a blog entry about three command lines, which describes how to bring up your power box online on your notebook. Um, but it wasn't enough for me because I said, like, okay, that can't be true. You, you have to stop these scripts, you have to bring them online back. And it was quite unsorted and for the normal user, it's too difficult to use. Um, by the way, that's my desktop at this point. <coughs> And uh, yeah, it was very fancy code, and I started to collect it and to resort it. And yeah, the next development step was this kind of stuff. A hacker called Christian Rutten from Germany stepped into the project for a few couple of months and tried to summarize the things David does on two devices into one device. And this was the first. Um, yeah, the first device which was supported or used to be a pirate box. She created, she created an uh, open WRT package. And this enables not only the very expensive buffer router to be um, supported by Pirate or even one Pirate software. These tiny devices, like you see in front of me, um, are supported too, and they are quite cheap. Um, so it's the one on the right side, the white one is with an included battery, and another one, as you can see, is powered by an external battery. And they are quite cheap, and because of that, it runs very popular. All these devices at this point were only supported by OpenWRT trunk, it's a bleeding edge, develop, bleeding edge development source code, and it gets recompiled everything. And because Britain left the project quite fast after releasing, well, nobody was able to help in the end of 2011. It was quite a mess in, in this year because everybody was quite <coughs> for. So I stepped into, the, into this development, get, get around this open WRT stuff, and I connected those two development lines, notebooks and open WRT stuff, together to one big source package with 
provides the same features and provides the um, same functions on each platform. Since, since the yeah, air switch from 2011 to 2012, we are, have a growing fan base. And we have, as you know, our project is only two, only two, two and a half years old. So, um, but there's doing much things in the community, and we've done a lot of code changes. Currently, we are running, um, we are mostly away from these Python scripts. We are running a normal web stack with a web server and a few Python scripts beyond. And um, how does a Pyrodot looks like? Well, okay, let's try back. That's the current stable image, 0 0.6. And in the end, middle, end of November, we are going to release Pyrobox 1.0. Pyrobox 1.0 will come with, ah, sorry, I forgot. Of course, we have an imaging board like 4chan for discussion if you want to install it. Um, oh, but I guess I got messed up. <laughs> okay. This is the current situation. We have uh, an image board running the Nitty and Pearl scripts on it. And in the end of um, 2012, I stepped into the development of the pipe, uh, of the Raspberry Pi stuff. My first Raspberry Pi um, got damaged during the first, first transport. It was the first batch delivered. It was quite a mess. And I was very, very, very sad about it. And nevertheless, I started at the end of 2012 to ship pre packaged. Powerbox SD card images, and this one, this picture is taken from a uh, Jungerian uh, festival where the Powerbox was used to bring information down to the, to the audience and collect pictures and feedback. And in this case, the owner used a um, normal OpenWRT router to provide stable and, and strong Wi Fi signals. And the, the Raspberry runs the Powerbox scripts and the Powerbox image. This picture was um, even posted on raspberry.i.org and in the September 2013 we had over 400 downloads of this image. So it's quite, quite nice for me because uh, comparing to the, to the OpenWT stuff it's more than a double in a month. So, um, next step, Fox. Fox everywhere. Because the Pyrobox project is very modular and very um, not so closed in the way it's designed, everybody starts to get into it and tries to interpret the software and the idea behind it for its own way. The first thing which came around was uh, this tiny box on the right side. It's called Kodo Box, and uh, the guy is using it as a kind of time capsule. He travels around <coughs> during the, the, during America through America talking with people, collecting data, and saving them on the box. And, talk, and, and discuss about the idea of sharing freely. The next huge project or huge broke is the, a, a huge fork is the um, project library box. It's, it's uh, founded or created from Jason, by Jason Griffin. And it stripped down the evil power broad and the evil power box logo from the from the concept, we move the upload feature and provides some kind of creative common sharing on libraries and other situations. <coughs> so it's, the main use case is schools and libraries and so on. And because we have a huge fan base upon the librarians, we started a Kickstarter campaign and we raised thirty-three thousand dollar in the Kickstarter and um, sponsored a lot of further development, which flow, which will flow back into the Powerbox project. At a point specifically, for example, the automatic installation. Before that, for the Kickstarter campaign, you have to do 15, 17 steps of manual changing, editing files in VI. It's very difficult for not technician people. Um, and now you have, to, you have to do five steps extract, upload file, press, and wait, and you're done. And another interpretation is uh, so called. Cowbox, it's mostly a French fork. They are using uh, an PI with Etherpad, FTP servers, and so on. And it's for co working spaces where you have to work on specific projects without having internet. And another awesome project is called uh, worldreader.org. It's a non profit organization of, from Africa. They are located in Ghana and provide ebooks for children. 
Uh, clearly, they are using the Amazon infrastructure for providing the, the e-books to the, to the children. And as you can see, they all have kind of Kindles. Um, and it's much easier to provide e-books and e-book readers than shipping books from India printed to Africa. And they, are, they want to step away from the Amazon cloud and the Amazon dependencies and go to free and open software. And they're, going, they're starting to develop a way with the publishers to use the Pirate Box concept for providing stuff in libraries. And you won't even believe the libraries in Ghana are already yet empty. There are empty shelves. You only have a room with empty shelves where you can get your books. Pirate Box is even used in schools and universities. For example, one university in Canada, they have a very bad infrastructure, so they are using Pirate Box to provide content for the students, collect homeworks, and in France there's a fork called Pedago Box with over 200 iPads they serve from Pirate Box, based upon the Pirate Box software. And you can do it for even more tinier usages. It's not only about file sharing. Yeah. Crypto parties. Uh, crypto parties. A friend of mine from Crypto Party Frankfurt uses the Pirate Box, provides installation packages. Um, not all, you don't always have internet at cafes or bars, so uh, he put all the put all the software down to the pirate box and leads every visitor and every interested man down to the pirate box to download their Thunderbird and so on. And they are using it for a public key exchange, like we did yesterday in the second party, because the internet was so bad, so we start to exchange our public key on the pirate box. So that's it. So there are over 250 pirate boxes registrated before the, before the server of this map crashed. We had this is an early pic picture. We had this time around, yeah, 150, 200 pirate boxes registered, and yeah, when uh, when we raised the 250, the um, server crashed and there was no backup. So the new the new web is quite crap, and so that, but you have you get an impression what's going on in French, and uh, the French community is raised by a guy called Jordan Baker, based up on the tiny city at the northern edge of French. It's uh, Lil called Lil, and nearly 90% of this entry uh, pirate boxes are located in the past. So, but it's not only about sharing, it's about doing yourself, modifying the box, and a lot of people start to find ways to power it offline, <coughs> on the way, on the run, in the outside fields, meshing up the logo, um, running it on, at such, on, on solar power. Some people are going to use um, car batteries. For long one long time, long one times, here Telecomix is using used pirate box on, on quadrocopters, for example. Another group used quadrocopters with some illuminating lights on it and flow across London, um, providing free free software, free content across London. And yeah, it's located all over the world, especially in countries with critical infrastructure, critical government, and um, there are people are going to tech the environment while pirate box is located. That, that's a stranger recognized there's something going on with the Wi-Fi. Now, on this letter there was a QR code of the other side. That is, this picture is the, the latest quite common picture about pirate box on the internet. It was published in summer this year. It's a metal box. It looks totally awesome. I think it's was on one or two public web pages again, and it always pops out of nothing into the internet. And then there's a few strange movement, and then it pops down again. And here we have, I think it was Iraq or, or Egypt or something like that, in a permanent installation providing data. So, yeah, that's all cool. What we are going to do next, I started a couple of minutes ago to talk about it already because I'm so excited. Uh, but First of all, you will mention, okay, we have a pirate box, single web server, can you combine techniques, can you do something else? But yes, you can. Yes, you can. Uh, the short story behind this screenshot is that um, because of the bleeding itch source of OpenWRT with the broken, with broken kernel module dependencies, I started to integrate custom built images containing everything you need to build your pirate box to get it even more easier. And while I created these packages, I just dipped into the mesh topic because always it came up and said, hey, can't we mesh up the hybrid box? And so, yeah, we can. I, I had a look and I 
just made an announcement about this custom images and read in the middle, uh, in the end of some tiny session, so yeah, and I added Batman protocol for doing bash some time, and it went, went viral. It was on turn freak too. It was like, what the fuck? So only, uh, it's interesting how the people on the Firebox community react on all these tiny little features we are going to think about and work on. And I worked on this mesh synchronization. We had some kind of alpha pre-beta implementation with the software called Forum. It finds the number of pirate box if it's installed and start to exchange the data. But it's um, yeah quite messy because every file about 100 megabytes starts to be problematic because it's doing normal HTTP GET and um, if it if, if the connection gets interrupted, and that's quite common on mesh network on high traffic and high load situations, it starts to download the file again from the beginning and from the beginning and from the beginning. So uh, you end up in a in a very bad situation of your Wi-Fi environment. So I don't recommend you use it in production, but for testing issues, it's quite cool. And my idea was, you and your friend, you have a pilot box at home. You fill your stuff, meet in a pub, have a couple of beers, go home, and the files are exchanged. You don't even have to touch your notebook. So again, this is the current situation of the pirate box. Not, 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 it's not very user centric, and it's a typical problem of nerd people. We build it; it's functional. Uh, yeah, it works very, very bad on mobile devices. And with 1.0, we have responsive, nice responsive design, which is which resizes very well on different devices. Even the directory listing is um, responsive and. If you have already tried Pirate in the last couple of days, it was the pre-alpha version of, of this version. Um, and I brought the latest beta release with me, which I spared for this day, uh, where you can see even the responsive uh, directory listening, which cost awesome. We, we've written, rewritten all the Pirate Box packages. We removed every nasty hack about fixing or tricking the packaging system of OpenWRT and included into the OpenWRT build tree. So I hope at a specific point we can hook, our, hook in our packages into the OpenWRT build system. And yeah, that's a huge leap because, because of this we, can, we are able to do automatic installation of every kind of packages, every kind of software out of the USB stick. And that development was mostly founded by uh, the Kickstarter campaign. Yeah, modular. modular is, Modularization. Yes. Our further, further vision is to have a modular um, box which you can, which you have an admin interface where you upload functionality and activate it or disable it and show other visitors your personal universe of your pirate box, like band page, like uh, school, like art, whatever. And um, we are not so close to this illusion yet, but a lot of people already start to customize the pirate box and, and because of the main concept is already a bit modular, people are doing things like exchanging our ugly interface with this Twitter, Twitter bootstrap. Or my personal favorite is this, it's pirate box with COPS. COPS is Calibre on PHP and uh, it works out of the USB stick of these tiny boxes. And you are, supposed, you, are, you are able to, to look into the ebooks, download ebooks. And by the way, Pirate works very, very well with ebook readers. I was totally impressed when I tried it for myself after two years of making Pirate Box development. So, how can you get Pirate Box? How do you, do you get to those devices? So, no, it's not. It's not shut up and take my money. It's, it's, totally, it's totally do it yourself. We are not selling Pirate Boxes. So there's a how to, um, somehow the links gone, I think, maybe. Um, so this, these pirate boxes, these tiny ones, are about 35 US dollars, depending on the course, depending on how you get stuff from China. Uh, and it's not included, in this case, it's not included with battery, but uh, it's maybe a surface for your users. I think a one gigabyte USB stick is the minimum. I recommend using 8 or 16, however, whatever you're, you're doing, mm -hmm. are going to do with the pirate box. Yeah, there's the link. Pirate box, there is a shortcut to the how to. We currently don't have a um, community web page. We are working on it for the 1.0 release, just collecting all the information spread across the internet to one web page to have one specific 
uh, entry point for, for the people who work in the pilot box project. It's, yeah, there are only a couple of people doing it start as a design job, so it takes time. And but that web page is quite functional and works quite, and works very well. And we have a forum which you can join. So pilot box. Remember, culture is not a crime. Share, share your stuff, and don't don't rely on decentralized stuff. You are not always allowed to upload content you want to upload. Sharing is not stealing, not, not in any case. It's um, remember, somebody will need it for some case. For example, sharing documents about your students, uh, for your students, or sharing music, sharing Creative Commons music. And yeah, don't mess with the internet because we fix it. So. <coughs> I showed you a small, small part, a small way about my pilot box university, uh, university, my pilot box universe, and I hope you enjoyed it. So, do any of you, any one of you, have questions? <coughs> for the Pyrobox project with my PayPal account and it took uh, half a year. It was right before Christmas on 21st uh, December, 16 o'clock, my PayPal account was closed because of collecting donations for a software which you can use for file sharing. But yeah. that's the only way that's the only issue I had with uh, the law or with some companies about it. Yeah, don't use PayPal. Oh, <laughs> Yeah, I did. Got, I, I, get, I got it two months later, um, but it was very, a very ugly situation because I called them a lot of long emails, and um, they don't even want to want me as a user anymore. I have, I'm registered at PayPal, so I'm not able to re-register anymore. So I'm totally off PayPal now. That's that's okay if you get around with doing it with, with credit cards and something like that. You can live without PayPal, really. Any other questions? What, what about this storage? Uh, I want to share file where those files are going. On the USB stick. Okay. Uh, everything is running out and from and to the USB stick. On the, on the devices, if you run it on your Raspberry, it's going to be the SD card, but it's not a um, binary plot or something, so you can exchange links that it points to the USB to the USB drive, but if you want it on your, use, on, on your notebook, which is possible too, you can lay down it on a hard disk, so no issues. Uh, first of all, how long have, have you come in, in packaging it for in VFWRP? Um, have you tried OLSRD for meshing, except for Batman? <sighs> I don't want to get into this, this discussion very long no, 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 about no, no, mesh yeah. protocols. Um, the reason why I cho choose uh, Batman Advanced is because it's on, a, on layer 2 of the, of the transport layer. So it's very easy to implement a, a, a mesh network without doing a lot of IP stuff, without everything else. So it, just, it was a very simple and easy solution which we, can, which we are able to use and that was the reason to step to Batman. But that's in no way what Firefox anyway. I suppose I can choose any, any Yeah, of course, because the, it's on a, on a different level. Yeah. So um, the current mesh implementation has gotten reworked. Uh, we are using IPv6 uh, during the mesh. And so and it's hooked into a normal bridge on normal networking bridge on OpenWRT, so you can just exchange the thing on the on the uh, on below. So yeah. and how long have you gotten with packaging for well, is it able to, to use OPG, OPKG installed? That's well, that was able to, that um, using our package was already done by uh, Christiane in 2011. But the issue with this packages were that they did 
she, she started she started to tweak the package manager within the, the installation process. And if you if it messed up there, you are lost. So and that was the reason for, for rewriting it. And in the current situation, you have clean clean and open package which you can install on any device and in any situation. You don't even need to use the USB stick if you don't want to. Um, and that take, took me, that rewrite took me a half year around to get it stable with everything around. Not full time, it's part time. Yeah. So if there are no more questions, let's thank the speaker again. We'll uh, reconvene here at 11 for testing.